Today I want to talk about one of the core concepts in CSS. And the C in CSS actually stands for Cascade, Cascading Style Sheets. So what is this Cascade that they're talking about? It's actually a whole bunch of different things. If we look at the HTML that I've got right here, you can see that HTML is built up of nested tags. So the H1 is inside of the header, the header is inside of the body, the body is inside of the HTML tag. Inside the main, I've got a paragraph. Inside the paragraph, there's an anchor tag. Inside the anchor tag, there's a span. So there's this nesting that's going on. In your styles, you can target things by following this path. I could say main p a span, main p a span. So what I'm saying is I want to style the span, but only if the span exists inside of an anchor and only if that anchor exists inside of a paragraph and only if that anchor or that paragraph exists inside of a main element. So there's this nesting and we can create these paths. The properties, the style properties that we apply to main or the p or the a or the span, these, a lot of them will actually be inherited. So if I put let's say the color blue on the main as the font color. That blue is going to be cascaded down to the paragraph tag. The paragraph will inherit the blue color. The anchor tag, while it wants to inherit most things, some tags have things that they want to use to override. So the anchor tag wants to display it with this specific blue. So if I was to use instead of blue, let's uh, say green on the main, green on the paragraph. The anchor tag, although it wants to inherit styles, will have its own default blue. So unless I override that, I'm going to have the blue. So even if I come into my style sheet and I find my tags here. So main. If I come into main and I set the color green. There we go. You can see that green applied everywhere except for the anchor tag. Even though the anchor was inside of the paragraph, the green didn't carry on because anchors say, you know what, I've got my own special color that I want to use. I've got this text decoration underline that I want to use. I don't care what my parent is doing for those properties. The other stuff, yeah, let it cascade down. I will inherit everything except for the underline and the color. Those are two things that the anchors don't inherit. So how does this overriding work? Well, there's three things that let the browser determine what styles get applied to which elements. First of all is the importance. All styles, padding, color, whatever you want to put in there, all of these get a normal style applied to them. They're considered to be normal styles. If you add this important to it, it changes it from normal to important, and then this will override other things. So if I said color red important, that's going to override things. Specificity has to do with um, when there's a tie. So you're looking at how many tags, how many IDs, how many classes are in the selector to target something, and you add up all those numbers. So like this example here. When I've, I'm styling the span, if the span is inside of a paragraph that has both the one and two classes, and that's inside of something with a class big, and that's inside of the class with, or is inside of an element with the class red, then we add these all up. So there were four classes, there's two tags, and zero IDs. So it's kind of like creating a software version number. This number represents the specificity for these properties on this element right here, the span element. IDs are the most important. That's the first number here. So in specificity, IDs, they're the top of the food chain. They're the things that get applied last. Classes, pseudo-classes, attribute selectors, those are the middle number. And the type selectors, elements and pseudo-elements, those are the things that are in the final column here. And you just add them together. Whenever you end up with a tie, that's when it comes down to, well, which one was written second, or which one was closer to the actual element. So if I ha had a style that was on span, that ended with span, looking at this example here, 
So this is one tag, two tags, three tags, four tags. So the number is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Even if I rearrange this order, the style for the span here would be applied last out of these four because this one had four tag styles, this one only had three, this one had two, this one had one. So even if I change the order that these are written, the four helps me win out. Now if there's a tie, let's say I come in here and I do this. Now both these ones have four tag styles, four of the element styles. Whatever I put inside of here, they've got equal weighting. Well, then it comes down to which is closer to the element. Well, they're both pointing to the same thing. They're both pointing to the span. So they're tied in specificity. They're tied in how close they are to the thing that's being styled. At this point, it becomes the order that they're written in. Now, that brings us back to the other factor here, the source order. Here's our last thing in the browser using um, uh, the last thing that the browser uses to decide how styles are applied. In the source order, we're talking about here. You've got styles that are applied by the browser itself. These are the user agent styles. So the default styles. Every browser likes Times New Roman or like Chrome is going to use Times New Roman as its default font. That's a user agent style. The author style sheet well, you as the developer or the designer, you're writing the CSS. Those are the author style sheets. Now, within the author style sheets, we have external style sheets. So it's a link that I'm putting into the head. That link points to a CSS file. The CSS file is being loaded and the style is being applied. That's an external style sheet. Embedded style sheets are what I have here. It's a style element directly inside of the head of my HTML file. And then inline styles, these are the last ones. These ones you don't see that often. They're not recommended for use. I can come in here and I can say the uh, font family is cursive. There we go. I've changed that by adding this inline style. This is fine for testing. You want to experiment and see what's going to happen on your page when you do this. That's fine. But in the end, you want to have it in an external style sheet. That's the, the recommended approach. Much easier to have a style sheet shared amongst multiple files if it is actually an external file that you can link to from multiple files. So that's the preferred approach. Okay, so I've thrown a lot of things out at you here. Deciding which styles get applied. So the importance, first of all. Everything is normal unless you add this important to the end of it. If you add the important, it kind of becomes a top-level thing here. So at the top of this list, we could say important. That is the thing that gets applied last of all. Now, IDs, number one, classes, pseudoclasses, attribute selectors, that's the middle number. And then type selectors, that's the last one. Those are elements and pseudo-elements. The source order also plays a factor. So whether it's in the external style sheet, the embedded style sheet, the inline style sheet, that's the order they get applied. External, embedded, and then inline. So that gets done. The specificity gets used to break ties. There's all these different things. There's different ways that cascades are happening. So from the source order, from the specificity, from the order that you've written your tags in to create your CSS selectors, now, I've got different ones. They both end pointing at the same element here. Body, main, p, span, main, p, a, span. Same number, so they've got the equal specificity. They end at the same thing. Now, if I removed span from here and I style p, so let's say color is going to be gold. There we go. Now, this has got three. This has got four. I'm going to take out the P here. Now they've both got three. If I add a color in here, and we'll say pink, the pink is being applied here. Now I said earlier that the anchor tag wants to override everything that the P has got in terms of the underline of the color, and it does do that. 
the P is getting the gold. The gold wants to be inherited. It wants to cascade down, but the anchor says, nope, I'm going to use blue. I don't care what you've got it set at. However, the span is inside the anchor. So the span automatically inherits the blue from the anchor tag. But then this span, which is inside of the anchor tag, gets pink applied. So because I'm no longer talking about the anchor itself, now the span gets to use its own cover, color and it overrides the blue uh, here. So this has got three as well. Targeting the anchor tag, let's say color is olive. Okay, so gold on the paragraph, olive, green on the anchor tag, and then pink on the span. All three of these have the same specificity. They've got the same number of elements, so they would all be considered, uh, in terms of specificity, a 0, 0, 0.0.3 would be the number used to refer to them. So the browser sees these as having the same value with specificity. I can rearrange these in any order. I can put the paragraph first, the span second, the anchor first. I can play around with these. It doesn't matter what order they're written. What matters now, because the specificity was equal, they're in the same place, the same source order, so the only difference now between them, and this is the last part of the cascade, it's the fact that we're looking at the order in which the tags are written. And the thing that we're targeting, which is the last thing in this long chain, the P, the span, the A, that's what matters. It's the thing that we're targeting last. That's the final deciding factor on which styles are going to be applied here. All right, so I hope that helps you understand a little bit about the cascade and the different types of cascades that are going on and why there is a cascade as part of the name, Cascading Style Sheets. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will leave a link to this uh, page. You can experiment with it. I've got all these different uh, tags in the CSS here. You can put in different colors and different CSS properties to experiment with them and make sure that you understand how this cascade works. All right, thanks for watching.